This is MRN Crew Call, brought to you by Hercules Tires. I don't know about you, but I love first-time winners. And boy, we had our share at Talladega Super Speedway, that's for sure. Well, that's drivers. And yes, it's great for drivers to get first-time wins, but I love when crew chiefs get first-time wins as well, and particularly when there's someone that has been around the sport for a while. Robert Booty Barker, crew chief for Bubba Wallace on Sunday. No, stand corrected. Monday afternoon. It's a bad habit. We need to no, no longer do Monday races. Sunday afternoon, Monday afternoon. Booty Barker in his 484th race got his first career win. And really, really happy for Booty. I actually, it was, it was ironic that uh, um, today on the show, we're going to talk to Pat Trice and a guy I've talked to a lot in the past and hadn't caught up with recently. Booty's another one. Uh, he'd been in the shop over at uh, 2311 Racing and uh, saw him on Sunday morning before we got rained out at Talladega. He got a chance to spend time with him. And who knew about uh, 28 hours later, he'd be in victory lane celebrating with his driver, Bubba Walls. Booty has a great history in the sport, as I talked about, uh, 484 starts. Uh, back in 2002, going back, he actually had a string of races in the Xfinity where him and Scott Wimmer up at Bill Davis races, Racing won four of eight races. So Booty, a very accomplished engineer, very accomplished crew chief, and now a race-winning crew chief. So I love new winners. Crew chief friends of mine like Booty Barker. This is Steve Post, and this is Crew Call, presented by Hercules Tires right on our strength. I mentioned Pat Trison. He is another veteran crew chief, been around for a long time, a 59-year-old out of Malvern, Pennsylvania, eight-time winner on the Cup Series. That was a few years ago. 692 Cup Series starts over 24 years, but midway through this season, he took a little bit of a turn. Our motorsports needed a team manager and a crew chief, and he is over there on the Xfinity Series with driver Brett Moffitt, and he joins us here on Crew Call. For decades, Dryden Lubricants has been made in America and made to last, paving the way on our highways, in our fields, and on the production line. Today, Dryden offers a complete line of engine oils, greases, hydraulic and transmission fluids, and diesel exhaust fluid. If you want greater performance and protection for your critical engines and equipment, go to Dryden.com. Dryden, American owned and operated, and a proud supporter of racing and race fans everywhere. Flow Racing is the home of grassroots racing, with over 1,300 races streaming live in 2021. Watch the Lucas Oil Chili Bowl, World 100, Dirt Late Model Dreams, Sweet 16, and much, much more. Subscribe today by going to flowracing.com slash MRN. From sprint cars on dirt to SK Modifieds on pavement, arena cross, drag racing, and everything in between, it's here, live, and on demand. Subscribe today by going to flowracing.com slash MRN. That's F-L-O racing.com forward slash MRN. Crew call presented by Hercules Tires continues on and joining is a good friend. It's been a while since we've had the chance to talk, uh, talk on the radio or on a podcast, but Pat Trison joins us from Our Motorsports. Hello, Pat. How are you? Great, Steve. How about yourself? I am well. I am well. I was uh, I shared a little bit with you, and I've talked about it. We used to do radio all the time with NASCAR Performance Live, and uh, life has changed, and everything has changed, and uh, it's just good to be back. Good to catch back up with you for sure, and uh, with your new gigs, uh, your new digs up there at Our Motorsports. That's pretty cool. Yeah, that's great for me so far, so I'm uh, really looking forward to uh, the rest of this year and next year. Yeah, sounds good. Pat, before we get into that, I, I want to go back. Um like I said, it's I, I knew you're a Pennsylvania guy, and we chatted a lot back in the day all the time. It seemed like I didn't realize that your dad was like the chief wrench for a legendary drag racer, <laughs> Grumpy Jenkins. What was that like? It was, yeah, I mean, that's what I grew up in drag racing, and, uh, you know, it was a lot of fun. And, uh, yeah, my dad built all the motors there for till, uh, till he moved south, actually, so... Uh, uh, you know, it was a lot of fun. It was an interesting, a little different kind of sport, but uh, that's how I got involved in this sport because he uh, they started doing a lot of research for Chevrolet, did some uh, V6 motors for Bush Grand National. Uh, they actually did a motor for Donnie Allison. They sat on the pole for Daytona 500 back in 1976. So they've done a lot of stuff. And, uh, you know, he come down there and then uh, he worked for uh, Ralph Yates Motors. It was originally Morosos. And then, uh, 
you know, drag racing connection there, obviously, but uh, then you want to, I guess he won a couple of Xfinity championships. And then uh, fortunately for me, I got to win a couple of Xfinity races with him, with his motors in my car with, with Mark driving. So that was pretty, pretty exciting. That's cool. That is really cool. What do you, were, were you, were you the little kid that wanted to go to work with dad? Were you the little kid that followed along? What, what was that like in, in, in that time period for you, Pat? Yeah, I was, yeah, I was a little kid that wanted to go, go work with dad, do the drag racing stuff. But, uh, you know, they made me go to school, made me go to college. So for, fortunately football worked out. I played a lot of football. And uh, so, but uh, I still worked up there with some on weekends and went to a lot of races with them. And, uh, you know, since when they first went to those big blocks, those, those were a lot different to motors and stuff. So I spent a few of my weekends filling blocks halfway up with concrete. Not, not the most exciting job, but somebody had to do it. No doubt. That is cool. That is cool. And that racing background certainly, certainly has served you well as you move forward. Now, you also mentioned um, we're, uh, you, you went to college, you went to Westchester University. Yeah. What did I read? You were a linebacker there? Yes, yes. Yeah, I was supposed to play strong safety and uh, uh, somebody got in a little trouble. So they moved me to inside linebacker. So I played line, inside linebacker for three years. Yeah, so yeah. Were so, you? Were you, were, was there any consideration? Were you, were you of the, of the caliber that you could have pursued that a little further or was it, was that not the case? Yeah, no, I could have, uh, we, we, we talked about it, but I, unfortunately, like, so I played inside linebacker. I was only 205 pounds. So I was okay. a little light for the NFL, but, uh, I would have had switched to strong safety. I had a couple of chances to do, I could have tried out with Philadelphia or Tampa, but, uh, just, you know, you, you got to spend your whole summer working out and, uh, you know, I, I graduated in December, so that's uh, from December to camp starts. That's, uh, I had to go get a job, so <laughs> working in a depot was a little more important. But, you know, you, you regret it now, but it's hard to say what would have happened. No, I mean, that's fascinating. That really is. What was the – What was the, the uh, one of the things I'm always fascinated about, and we've got so many college athletes in the, in the pits and working on these teams and, and crewing these cars. That team dynamic that you had to have there at Westchester – that's had to serve you well also in your, uh, in your career in NASCAR. Yeah, for sure. You got, you know, you learn when you play sports, you uh, learn how to deal with different personalities and uh, <clears throat> how to relate to different people. And then, uh, you know, that's the biggest thing when you're, you're in any kind of management position, how to deal with, you know, not everybody's same. Some guys need smacked and other guys just need, you know, sweet talk to. So it just all depends. And uh, you know, that's, uh, you know, fortunately for me, I was the captain of, of the football team. So that helped too. So, but uh like I so said, you learn to deal with a lot of different individuals and some, some, some go good and some don't go bad, but uh, I can honestly say my college experience was great for me. So that's neat. That's neat. The decision you, you, you have a father who was well-established with a hall of famer in drag racing, your decision though, to do, to incorporate left turns and right and left turns with NASCAR. <laughs> Walk me through that decision, Pat, because you, you probably could have pursued something with your with your dad's pedigree on the straight line set as well. Yeah, probably. I mean, but, uh, you know, they, like I said, they got into doing some Bushcraft National Motors. They did uh, motors for Hensley's. They did some for Ken Schrader. Uh, so I, I kind of like that a little more. It's a little more different than, you know, you grow up doing something, you want to try something different. So, so I actually, you know, so that's what got me started. He helped get me down here. I went uh, part-time. Uh, with Don Beverly's car with, you know, drag racer uh, with uh, J Johnny Cash and uh, Bobby King. They were in charge of Jimmy Hensley was driving. And that that's what really got me started. And I uh, went to a couple races with Schrader too. So uh, those things got me started. And then I moved down here and uh, worked for another drag racer. It was my first job, obviously. Uh, same thing, connections. Uh, my dad helped me get that job with uh, Kenny Bernstein's deal with Richard Broom. My dad and Richard Broom are good friends from drag racing. So, it's, uh, so I got started and uh, I guess the rest, I guess, is history. What did you, what did you do? What did you, what were your starting jobs working on those, uh, those NASCAR teams, Pat? Well, you know, first it was just weekend help doing whatever. And then when I went to work for Bernstein's, uh, you know, it was kind of same thing. Did whatever you do uh, entry level, you know, I was grinding suspension some days, cleaning cars some days, uh, just depend, uh, make crush panels. I did whatever they asked me to do, you know, because you're just, you're just happy to be there. And then it was a good thing about it was I learned how to do a little bit of everything. So it helped me in the long term. Was the goal always to be a crew chief? No, uh, the goal was just to work, <laughs> work and race. And, yeah. Uh, I mean, obviously, we all want to be drivers, but, uh, you know, you got to have uh, a little deeper pockets than we had to do that. So, uh, you know, we, uh, so I just, uh, you know, it just, it just where it involved. I, you know, I really like 
you know, the technical side, the car side of it. So I just, as it's going along, that's just where I ended up. And uh, like I said, I had some really good people that helped me, you know, Donnie Richardson, Richard Broom, you know, they were the biggest two that really helped me get going. Yeah. You're talking Donnie Richardson and Richard Broom, boy, that is, that is old school, hardcore racers right there, Pat, <laughs> man, those guys, man, those, those guys knew it all and did it all. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like I said, it was a great bunch of guys to work with, you know, and so, you know, and then, then obviously there, they got me connected with the, you know, the Brett was driving and then I worked for Jeff and with Todd. So it's kind of, you know, the Bodines are another family that helped me get going too. So you're, what was it like when you were offered your first crew chief guy? Tell, tell me, tell me how you got that first crew chief gig. Uh, well, so I, you know, I'd become friends with uh, Todd Bodine through, you know, different people and my wife and uh, some other people. And so, uh, you know, I was uh, working for Ricky Rudd as car chief with Richard and, uh, so uh, Jeff called, and uh, so because of Todd and because of Richard, and uh, so I, you know, was a, I wasn't sure I was going to do it, but uh, you know, it was an opportunity, and you're young and you're dumb. Say so why not? Why not? Yeah. So I went and did it, and uh, you know, that's what got me started. And uh, you know, I can't thank Jeff enough for that opportunity. It was a lot of fun, and uh, fortunately, unfortunately, we didn't win, but uh, we had some fun. Had some fun, that's for sure, and, and moved along. Now, Pat. We spent a lot of time when we were doing NASCAR Performance Live, our old show. That was in the 2000s. And when I look at your when I look at your career, eight wins between 2001, 2009, wins with um, wins with Mark Martin, wins with Kurt Busch, wins with Elliot Sadler. Boy, that that had to be a good time for Pat Trison when you <laughs> over there, the Wood Brothers and Roush Fenway Racing. You guys went with the track. The stopwatches were always pointed at you guys. Yeah, no, it was great. It was a lot of fun. Uh, you know, I, you know, it's funny the drag racing connection again with Jack. You know, I've known Jack since I was a little kid, yeah. so it was great to work for Jack. My dad was working for Jack at the same time doing the same motors. So, you know, like I said, it was a lot of fun. And uh, like I said, but yeah, the, 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 that time in my life was a lot of fun. You know, racing was more fun for me then. And, uh, you know, fortunately, we had competitive cars everywhere we went. And uh, Fortunate enough to get wins with different drivers, which is, uh, you know, not always the easiest thing either. So, but I uh, had great relations with them all. And, uh, you know, some of my best friends are still are Eddie and Lynn Wood. And, you know, I can't thank them enough for what they did either. And uh, unfortunately, we only won one with them, but, uh, you know, that's all part of it. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. Pat, this business, though, is brutal also. And, <laughs> and you know, as, as you know, we've talked about the getting the gigs and the, the working with people this sport can also kick you pretty hard and everything. How have you, how have you navigated some of those down periods of time? Well, I mean, you just, you know, you just can't ever lose confidence in yourself and you just got to work through it. And, uh, you know, there's sports slowly evolved and changed as, as uh, teams started looking for more and more engineers to be crew chiefs to kind of force some of the older school guys out. So then you do what you got to do to survive. So you take some jobs that maybe aren't the best for you, but you know, they keep you, in the sport, keep you being paid. And then, uh, fortunately some oppor other opportunities come up and then that's when you, you know, do what you got to do what you think is best for you. And that's, that's what kind of this opportunity our motorsports is for me. I think it's best for me for my career right now. Pat, when I, beginning of the year, when I, when I thought about the people I wanted to talk to your, your name was on my list and it was on my list because you were, you were crew chief for one of those small teams at the back of the cup garage and yep. um, good jobs, great people back there, hardworking people. There's, there's, there's no, <laughs> that's gotta be a unique spot for a crew chief though, to be, to be there where, man, if we get a top 20 finish, we, 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 we've accomplished something. That has got to be a weird and strange spot for a crew chief. Yeah. I mean, without a doubt, it's a, it's, you know, it's a, it's a more difficult road to hoe. It's a lot of work and, uh, but yeah, you know, when you, when, when, when you, you get excited about finishing 20, if that's, you know, it's not what you want, but that's what, that's where you're at. Like I said, unfortunately, you just have to learn to adjust your expectations. Otherwise you'll drive yourself crazy and you'll make your life miserable. If, you know, you're used to running top 10 and, you know, you're lucky to get a top 30. Well, that's, that makes things a little harder. One of the things that I've um, I've enjoyed about getting to know people at all levels, you know, we have the, the the top teams at the front of the garage, and everybody's watching how Hendrick does versus Gibbs versus this one versus that one. And then uh, I've gotten to know Tad Geschechter fairly well at JTG, and they're like, "How do we do against the other two car teams or the other mid sized okay. teams? Is it the same there with you guys at the back? How how did you how did you do against those other single car teams?" I mean, yeah, the cars in the back, we have our own race back there. You know, there's about 
six or seven of us. We got our own race. We we're all trying to beat the other ones. And that's really where you're at because what you get, but what a lot of people don't understand is, you know, we don't, we don't have the hundred thousand dollar motor every weekend. We own our motors and uh, we take care of them, you know, a different service contract. We don't buy all the tires. We try to buy tires from truck races and Xfinity races. There's times we run scuffs during the race. We don't even run stickers. So yeah, you're just trying to outrun the other guys, you know, it's a business. And, you know, fortunately, this keeps us employed. But at the same time, you know, we can't go buy 12 sets of tires because then Jay or Rick will go out of business. And that's not what you're looking for. So you, you just got to change your goals. And like I said, it's kind of fun. You got your own race back there. Everybody gets along, you know, but it's kind of funny because the guys up front don't even realize that you don't get all the tires. You don't do all the stuff. So they're, they're kind of in living their own world. They don't they don't even understand what it's like back there. Yeah. That was one of the reasons I wanted to talk with you, knowing some people back there like yourself. It's uh, it, it is such a such a different world and, and a great, 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 like I said, great group of people, but you roll into this, you roll into this season and all of a sudden you, 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 you get this opportunity with our motorsports where all of a sudden you're starting to call races to win races and to, to get top 10 finishes. What, what, tell me first off how that opportunity came about and what, what that, what that meant for you to get that. Yeah, they had some personnel changes and they, you know, they were, so they were looking for somebody to come in that could help with manage it and, and, and crew chief of car. So uh, fortunately enough, they talked to me and, uh, you know, kind of all fit and worked out. And, uh, you know, I was excited again, just for the very reason being competitive again. I mean, that's, you know, everybody wants to be competitive, but, you know, obviously Xfinity races are a little different to call, you know, so they're probably a little easier, but sometimes they're a little harder. So, you know, it's all on a little bit new. The cars are a little different. I have to learn some new things again. Uh, well, some new old things, but yeah. So, uh, but yeah, it's been fun and uh, it's been a great opportunity. And, uh, you know, it wasn't possible without Chris Hour. He's a great guy. You know, I, probably one of the nicest guys I've ever worked for. And, uh, you know, hopefully we can uh, continue this a lot farther and uh, build this into, uh, you know, one of the next big Xfinity teams and, who knows what he does down the road? Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's it, it's a neat story. It really, truly is. Now you're the crew chief, but you're also the um, as a team manager as well, and uh, making sure everything is good back at the shop too. Yeah, I kind of kind of make sure everything runs at the shop. We got uh, Kevin Mo Cope as our general manager right now, and so I take care of all the shop stuff and making sure the cars are ready. And uh, but yeah, so uh, crew chief in the one car the, with Brett and. Uh, you know, we get, we've been doing really well. We got to get a little better, but uh, you know, same thing. We're still we're right behind the big team, so we, you know, there's that little battle there with the independents. You know, Clements and uh, Brown, and guys like that. So that's you know, we are still trying to figure out how to get in that next grouping, but uh, we still have our own little bit of a race too. <laughs> you mentioned Brandon Brown. What does that mean for one of those mid pack teams? What is it? I mean, we know what it means for Brandon. We, we, we see what it means for Brandon. He's a social media darling. We understand all of that, but you guys also, is, is there, when you see something like that, is there, is, does, does that add a little spring to your step, a little hope to where you're at? Well, I mean, we were really good too that last weekend. We just, yeah. it didn't work out for us. So, I mean, obviously, you know, that's, you know, it, you don't, you know, it, it, them winning, yeah, it gives you a little hope, but uh, you'd rather see yourself win. So it's kind of one of those deals like, well, that's nice, but it really would have been better if it was us. So, and we, like I said, we ran really good. And we, we have hope every week, but like I said, we're trying to close the gap a little bit on the bigger teams. And, uh, you know, the, the plate races still give the smaller teams a little bit of equal opportunity. We have the same motors as those big teams. There's not quite, you know, if their driver's really good at the draft, can put himself in a better position. You know, whereas as we go to the downforce tracks, you know, we don't have quite all the information they do, don't have all the aero advantages that some of those teams have. So, but we're working on that. And that's one of the things we're trying to do here is, is uh, find ways to catch up to them. When we chit chatted before this, you said you almost got a win. Uh, and we talked about the Talladega, the strong run at Talladega. You, you spent a fair amount of time here recently. We're almost getting wins. Probably wasn't part of your, part of your, uh, part of your conversation. Pat, I, I can't imagine, I can't imagine how much fun this is to be, to be where you're at now. Yeah. I mean, it's great. Cause you know, you know, you know, you know, even, even so when you're running those back deals and you're, you know, even though you're the, you're the best of the day, you might've been 25th. It's still not a good feeling when you go home. Yeah. You know, you're happy because you beat the other guys, but at the end of the day, it still wasn't fun. Cause you weren't 
where you want to be. You know what I mean? So if you're a competitive person, which I am, obviously. So, yeah, this is huge for me to be, you know, to, to, to have the opportunity to run competitive. And, you know, we've been competitive. We're still not quite good enough, but we've got some top tens and some just right outside the top ten. And we're, you know, we want to get where we run top ten every week. And then we want to get to where we run top five every week. You want once you're on top five every week, one will fall your way. Yeah. Yeah. And you do that enough times. It's almost like a math equation. You know, it's uh, <laughs> you get enough top fives. One of them is going to come up a number one. That's for sure. Yeah. That's for even sure. a dummy like me will fall into one sooner or later. <laughs> oh, that's right. Exactly. Paul, no doubt. You got to put yourself there. That's for sure. Pat, um, off track. Uh, I think you and I have a daughter about the same age, which means grown up. Um, yeah. <laughs> how, so what's, uh, how, how, how's your, how's your family? Everything good off the racetrack? Yeah, it's great. Uh, my family's doing great. Uh, my daughter goes to UNC Asheville. She loves it up there. And uh, so she was just home last weekend because they had a fall break. So we got lucky to see her for a couple of days and sent her back to school. Her mom took her back to school on Monday. And uh, so everything's great. Just, uh, you know, the family's good. We're uh, actually looking forward to actually going back on vacation this year. We didn't go last year because you know, all the COVID stuff, but, uh, so make my annual trip to somewhere in the Caribbean. I think this year we're going to Belize. So get a little scuba diving in and uh, a little relaxation, maybe a margarita or two and everything will be good. So that's, so that's the, that's the Trace and family getaway. Some scuba diving some sand and some margaritas. Yeah. Scuba diving for me, they're, they're not the scuba divers. They're both certified, but they don't go, but yeah, I go scuba diving. That's what I like to do is real it's relaxing for me. So I only get to do it once or twice a year, but uh, yeah. So we, every December we try to go somewhere different in Caribbean. And so this year we're going to go to Belize. Mm -hmm. The noise of our NASCAR world. I imagine scuba diving has got to be the most peaceful thing on the planet. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty cool. It's awful quiet. And uh, you know, some guys like to go really deep. I'm not, I'd, I'd like to see a lot of stuff. So I'm more than 60 foot. Uh, you know, but you got guys that go really deep. Brendan Gone, he's a big diver. He loves, he's doing all kinds of different stuff. So, but uh, yeah, so he actually helped get my daughter certified at Lake Norman Scuba. So it's been a lot of fun for me. So, wow, that is cool. That is cool. Yeah, your daughter's at UNC Charlotte, or yours is at Asheville, mine is at UNC Charlotte, Pat. Well, the good yeah. thing is, we're not getting any older, but these kids are growing up, right? <laughs> oh, yeah, they're, they're a lot of fun. I mean, so it's, the school's been great for her and uh you know fortunately we were lucky enough to you know be able to save enough money to pay for it so uh so that's good too she she can graduate without knowing anybody any money i think <laughs> well i'm in the same boat my uh, my daughter is studying theater education meaning she wants to be a high school theater teacher and a teacher in north carolina and college debt is not a good combination so I'm like you. I'm fortunate enough that I, I've been able to nickel and dime this thing together where it looks like we might get her out of there without some debt. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm blessed as you are as well. That's neat. That's kind of funny because my daughter wants to do uh, English, but she wants to do it overseas. So she wants to see a little bit of the world. So you can teach English overseas without having to know all the different languages. So, so I think next year she's going to try to go to uh, South Korea to do a little bit of internship for three weeks to make sure she likes it. So it's kind of exciting. So at least maybe I'll get to travel later in life where just different spot she's at I'll go to. <laughs> Fascinating. That is cool. That is really cool. Pat, bringing it back to the racetrack. What do we got? We got uh, six races, five races, seven. I, I'm not sure. I've lost talk with talks with all these series. It seems like with the playoffs, what do you guys need to do here over the balance of this season? Not only to have it be a good ending, but to also set yourself up for 2022. Yeah, I think our, our goal right now is to try to get some top tens the rest of the year. And uh, we'd like to get them everywhere, obviously, but uh, it doesn't always work out. But the big thing is just to try to improve the program every week, try to get a little better. And, uh, you know, so the goal is top tens. And uh, hopefully if we get a win, that'd be better, obviously. But, uh, you know, the big thing is to get some consistency and try to try to get top tens every week and then see where we go from there. And uh, just keep working on our cars. We're going to try to we're, we're trying to get a car together, try to get a new car together for Phoenix. Not sure it's going to happen, but that's what we're going to try to do. And then, so that might be what we're racing next year. We're trying to evaluate our program. So working on that. Our motorsports driver, Brett Moffat and crew chief, Pat Trice and Pat. What a, what a thrill. Great to catch up with you. Appreciate you taking some time out and joining us here on crew call. No problem. It was always great to talk to you, Steve. I appreciate it. Thank you. There we go. Pat Trice and joining us here on crew call presented by Hercules tires. Citywide to countryside, whatever you drive, wherever you go, Hercules has the value, selection, and industry-leading warranty to get you there no matter where the road takes you. Go to HerculesTires.com. 
There you can find the nearest authorized Hercules retail location to you. Plus, you can use the tire tracker to find out which Hercules tire fits your vehicle the best. That's HerculesTires.com. Hercules Tires, ride on our strength. Sir, are you aware you were going 40 miles an hour? This is a residential area. Sure, but I'm on my lawnmower. Wait, am I getting a ticket? No, I've just never seen anyone top nine miles an hour on one of those bad boys. And mow their entire lawn in 30 seconds? What got into you? Well, it did fuel up at Sunoco this morning. At Sunoco, we know how to fuel peak performance. We've been doing it for American Racing for over 50 years. Fuel your best. Ford has put the stock back in stock car, and now you can register for your chance to be Ford Performance's VIP guest and watch the NASCAR Next Gen Mustang hit the track for the first time in 2022. One grand prize winner and their guest will receive a trip for two to Daytona Beach with VIP access. Ford Performance driver meet and greets, round trip airfare, and more. Register now through November 7th at FordNextGen.com. That's FordNextGen.com. There is so much going on in the automotive industry, and particularly we talk about Ford Motor Company, including a $22 billion investment into electrification to through the year 2025. And yes, that includes the Mustang. The all-electric Mustang Mach-E is being delivered to customers. It is available now to order. Check out the new Ford Mustang Mach-E and the complete line of all electric vehicles at www.ford.com and click on the electrification tab. There's a whole new breed of pony from Ford, the all electric Mustang Mach-E GT Performance Edition, a torque drenched driving experience with 634 foot pounds of torque clocking in at zero to 60 in 3.5 seconds. This pony earns, earns every inch of its GT badge. Once again, that's www.ford.com. Click on the electrified tab. The Cup Series, the Xfinity Series are at the Roval this weekend. The final round of the final race of the round of 12 for the playoffs. We've only have two drivers that are locked in. On the Cup side, only Denny Hamlin is locked in. He got that win at Las Vegas. On the Xfinity side, Austin Cindric, he is locked in on the basis of points. So he is good into the round of eight. Everybody else is going to have to tame the Roval this weekend at Charlotte Motor Speedway. It is going to be fascinating and fun to see who comes out on the right end of it and who goes home on the wrong end of it. As we go from the round of 12 to the round of eight with both the Cup Series and the Xfinity Series, our friends at PRN have all of the coverage this weekend from Charlotte Motor Speedway, Xfinity on Saturday afternoon, and the Cup Series, the Bank of America Roval 400 on Sunday afternoon, so you can catch our friends at Performance Racing Network. You can follow along with us at www.mrn.com, and you can see when our next events are coming up as far as broadcasting, and there's some great content and stories on mrn.com as well. Hey, we appreciate Pat Trison for joining us here on Crew Call but more important than all of that, thank you for joining us here on Crew Call, presented by Hercules Tires, right on our front.